Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Christine Chen. Uh, good wishes are continuing to pour in as we get a better idea of the impact of the Dolan fire. And once again, this morning, we are joined by CEO of Eslin, Terry Gilby. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Christine. You're more than welcome. Thank you for having me this, uh, this Facebook Live. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first wave of reaction, as we talked about yesterday, out of Esalen is, is relief, of course, gratitude, not just for the fact that people are safe, but all the help that you received. And this morning, really, now we turn to assessing the reality of the situation. Can you give us an idea of what we know today versus yesterday? It's a fluid situation, so every day brings a new update. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and again, just to take a moment to say thank you. Uh, the messages of support and curiosity and just the heartfelt gratitude uh, that we saw as a response to yesterday's uh, conversation and, uh, and this live broadcast was amazing. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and please, you know, uh, pass those on. Big Sur Fire deserves a huge shout out, as do many of our other uh, responders that have uh, supported us through this. Things have uh, not changed a, a great deal um, in terms of what's on the ground, uh, partly because of uh, the, a lack of information. Uh, but what I can share with you is, is a couple of things. We have unfortunately lost all power on property. Our generators that were keeping us running, they were keeping uh, various parts of the property functional, uh, did run out of fuel yesterday from what we can gather. And we know that because our friends of Essel and Sunset Camera went offline and our weather station went offline. So we lost those two and, and we believe that is due to the generators running out of, of fuel. That has uh, an impact on us from a, an operational perspective because that means some of our systems are now going to be dormant for a while. Our, our refrigeration for the kitchen, uh, refrigeration in various parts of the property uh, and also uh, alarm systems, et cetera, are now actually all, all down. Right. Terry, well, let me ask you, if we can break that down into what we can understand, um, when you go into a situation like that, you're on generator only, but all of these things that you mentioned that are support for the people who would go in to assess the situation, are we understanding that correctly? Yes. So it, 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 it will impact how we return to property. It will probably slow us down a little bit. Um, we also got news from CHP that uh, there is uh, additional hard closures of the road and they're being extremely strict about that. So exactly when we'll be able to get back onto property next week uh, is still uh, undetermined. Uh, it, it, it is probably going to be maybe early next week, we don't know, um, likely middle uh, of next week. So that again, you know, being off the property causes us uh, a few more challenges. Uh, we've got a lot of wildlife on property. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to have a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of uh, products produce in the farm. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully they're, they're making good use of that and getting nourished as well. And the latest that I received, and I'm sure you know this as well, but that this is still an active fire in the canyon. And though we, we mentioned yesterday that the water tanks were uh, gratefully saved, the pipelines are a complete loss. Is, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, that, that's absolutely correct, Christine. So we do know that there is still active fire in the canyon. We've gotten reports from on the ground from folks that that are in, in the emergency services there uh, and we we're also fortunate enough to have a, uh, a photographer that was approved to be in the area uh, share some uh, background pictures with us we have uh, when we were there uh, wow over 10 we're on day 10 now i guess so when we were able to get in uh, very early on uh, and get into the canyon we were able to to get a little ways in the fire was still very hot but we did and we're able to see that we have completely lost all of our uh, pipe work between uh, our water tanks and our main water treatment facility right there on property. So that is going to take, we estimate somewhere, it's gonna be at least a couple of weeks to do those repairs and, and get all of that reinstated. Mm -hmm. Terry, uh, can you see some of these pictures? These are 
um, from earlier in the week. And I'm, I'm going to present here a progression of photos because sometimes in the aftermath of a fire, you look at the earth and it is charred, but it doesn't really tell the full story of like just how close this came. Can you describe what we're seeing here? Because it just it went all the way to the water, it looks like on this one. Uh, yes, I, I, I actually don't know where this picture is from, Christine, exactly. But, you know, my, my personal experience was that it burned right down to the edge of Highway 1. It has burnt uh, all the way into the canyon. What you're seeing here, I think, is actually just south of um, our south coast uh, property and, and north of Esalen itself. And you can see that this fire is right down mm. on the edge of the road. Um, these are some amazing shots and, and this is very typical of what we actually saw um, as we started to do that evacuation process and had to move out on that, uh, that Thursday and, and Wednesday night. You can see just how intense it can get and that's absolutely why they evacuated you all. And so these are some of the pictures coming in from a photographer we've been working with. Thankfully, Michael Troutman um, was able to get some of these for us. The fire burned right up to the main sign. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so this is this is at the top of our driveway looking north and you can see uh, how that fire came down that hillside right to the very edge of, of Highway 1. Had that jumped Highway 1, um, it would have been a very different story than we would be telling today. It would have been catastrophic. But uh, all of that hillside, as, as we look up it from the property, is burnt. And it's going to be a, it, frankly, it's probably going to be a very challenging winter for us too. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing both with, you know, the proximity of the fire, the repairs that have to be done, the revelation that there might be more than meets the eye at this point, right? Yeah, we won't know until we get onto property. Our plan is as soon as we have got approval from uh, the Unified Command, CHP, Sheriff, and uh, the U.S. Forest Service and CAL FIRE, we'll start to uh, go through the property from end to end and get a very detailed set of information around what has been uh, damaged by the fire, by the smoke. Smoke is actually quite damaging too. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the restoration process will look like. We're anticipating, based on what we know today, that it could take uh, three to four weeks to complete all of the necessary restoration work. And I suspect that that actually will get a, a, to be a longer list as we get more eyes and, and feet on the property. Mm -hmm. You can There's just right there in that particular photo where it just went in and did its thing. And that is the story right there, this brown earth. Can you share with us at all some of the early word that you're getting about, you mentioned the pipelines, but some of the structures and you mentioned a bridge yesterday. Are there, is there a short list right now of things that we know need to be replaced, repaired? Yeah, so the, the, the water line will be a priority, obviously, because without water on property, we can't support anything. Um, we do know that the, the first footbridge inside the canyon, um, the old log footbridge that has the, uh, the flags on it, that has had one end of it burned and damaged quite significantly um, and, and is probably not safe. So we will have to replace that. Once we get further up into the canyon, we suspect that there is actually a lot more damage. The fire was very hot up inside that canyon and we were not able to get access to it. In terms of smoke damage, we will wait and see. Uh, the staff did an amazing job uh, in a very compressed evacuation of trying to close up as many of the buildings as we can but we still don't know um, what may have happened in terms of smoke damage. And then last but not least, now that the power is off, we're going to start to see things deteriorate. So the sooner we can get back on property, um, the better. And we're also you know, not going to do that until it is safe to, to return, not just to the property, but also to the area. There is a lot of active uh, fire protection work and uh, fire suppression work still going on as the fire continues to burn north and be, still be very, very close to Highway 1. So that is of a big concern to us as well, is, is just getting access in a safe manner, safe for us, um, safe for the emergency services as well, who are moving equipment up and down Highway 1. Yeah, absolutely. Number one is keep humans safe, right? Yeah. Uh, 
now that you're getting more information about things, I mean, earlier it was just relief. Thank you so much for keeping us safe. All the important things, humans safe. Mm -hmm. um, but there's now more story to tell about um, what needs to be repaired, the length of time that it might take to recover. Um, this is shifting your feelings, I'm sure, uh, a little bit. Can you let us in? Yeah. You know, we're beginning now to turn our thoughts to how do we begin to reopen? We exist. We are, we are part of human potentialities. So to get people back to property, to get back to taking care of that land is very much our focus right now. We're going to be planning over the next 48, 72 hours as to what that return might look like. Um, we are starting to put contractors on notice to work with us and, and begin to engage with them based on what we know, uh, because there is going to be a lot of work in terms of that water system and up into the canyon. We do know that at our South Coast property, which is where most of our staff uh, accommodation is, the fire got right down to within literally three or four feet of some of those buildings. So exactly what that means at that property um, we were, we have yet to determine, uh, and, you know, we've, we've got to think about the winter that is coming and how do we start to put protection in place so that the land is, is cared for, uh, and managed. Uh, and I will say that, you know, one of the things that is on our mind very, uh, currently is our farm and garden. We don't have any water on property. And so those, those beautiful, uh, flowers, our vegetables, everything that the farm and garden have worked hard to put in place um, through the spring and the summer, uh, it's not being cared for right now. And so getting back and getting water back onto property to support that is going to be a very, very important step. Yeah, that that's a really good point. A lot of times when something like this happens, you think about structures and what appears to be damaged to the eye, but you don't remember that what wasn't damaged still needs to be sustained. Um, this is also happening at a very complicated time. I don't need to tell you or anyone else. You're, any any time a fire recovery happens, it's a big project, it's a big undertaking anyway, but this is all intersecting with the time of COVID and the efforts to reopen in the time of COVID. Can you shed some light about just how difficult that's going to be? Um, and, and what we can do as an Esalen community to support this whole process as we send our hearts and our good wishes toward everyone who's working on this. Well, we will definitely take all of the, uh, the energetic support that we can get. It's going to be complicated, more complicated, as you said, than it would be normally. Um, having contractors work uh, in amongst our staff and making sure that everybody stays safe, the social distancing presents its challenges when you are trying to um, work on equipment and work in small spaces. And, you know, we are going to do this as thoughtfully and carefully as we can. And it is going to take some time. There is no doubt about that. Um, it, it is also compounded by the fact that locally here, there have been just enormous impact of the fire. I think the CZU lightning complex fire is, is still, um, still burning in places. And so ability to access contractors, uh, materials, all of those things, we've even seen the price of materials start to go up since the beginning of, of this fire time. So we're, we're dealing with a whole set of compounded issues, COVID, the Dolan fire, local area fires, economic impacts, accessibility to contractors. It's going to be a lot of challenge. Um, and we have amazing set of staff. Uh, I've talked to a number of them yesterday, and they are all very eager to get back to property to start this cleanup process, start the assessment process and the inventory of damage. Uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll start to rebuild. Yeah, well, this has been quite an educational process for us all to understand how a place as beloved as this was in the midst of reopening. And then now this has happened. And it just feels like that's kind of you know, the wave of things that's been happening in 2020. I mean, it's just like that, right? Um, what's been keeping you sane? Because you seem so calm and people who are like, oh, that's just the way he is. But for the 
just like, wow, we really feel heart sick about so many things right now. What's been keeping you sane and, and just keeping you positive during all of this? I, I think it's just been the level of outreach from people, uh, just the the messages of support. Um, we've had some some folks already offer some very generous donations. Um, you know, the, the light at the end of this tunnel, the, the future that Esalen has uh, is, is absolutely amazing. Fire is, can be extremely damaging, but it is also a, a cleansing and an opportunity for things to regenerate and grow. Um, so the future is, is keeping me very positive because I believe we have an amazing future in front of us. Um, the support of the staff here that are sheltered in place in Carmel with us at the moment, evacuated, um, their attitude is extremely uh, positive and, and is just a joy. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of the, the messages and, and, and the support that we're receiving from the outside has been absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, it's, yeah. it's really heartwarming to see how much love there is for Esalen, for the land, for the community and for the work we do. Yeah. All right. Well, keep the love coming, everyone. Thank you so much, Terry Gilby from Esalen, the CEO, for taking some time to give us an update on the impact and the assessment from the Dolan fire. We're obviously going to speak a little bit later this week as you find out more. And uh, just keep us posted and everyone stay connected via Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And we'll share what we know, like always. Good. And Christine, thank you again for hosting this conversation. Thank you so much for being here, Terry, and sharing so much of yourself. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Everyone, bye.